Does a clean people honour Jehovah? Well, physical cleanliness is associated with spiritual acceptableness. Now, Jehovah is a holy God. He is profaned by uncleanness, physical or spiritual. Let's have a look at Isaiah chapter 1 verse 16. Isaiah chapter 1 and it's verse 16. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean, remove the badness of your dealings from in front of my eyes, cease to do bad. Now the Israelites had to wash themselves and their clothing for an awesome assembly at Mount Sinai. This is recorded at Exodus chapter 19. Let's take a look at that, shall we? Exodus chapter 19 and verses 10 and 11. And Jehovah went on to say to Moses, Go to the people, and you must sanctify them today and tomorrow, and they must wash their mantles, and they must prove ready for the third day, because on the third day Jehovah will come down before the eyes of all the people upon Mount Sinai. So we see how important it was then for the Israelites to make themselves clean uh, before Jehovah. Now Aaron and his sons had to wash with water from a large copper basin before serving in the tent of meeting. If we take a look at Exodus 29, uh, just a few chapters on, and Exodus 29, and we'll take up the account from uh, verse 4. And you will present Aaron and his sons at the entrance of a tent of meeting, and you must wash them with water. Now just a little bit further on in chapter 30, uh, verses 18 and 19, we read, You must make a basin of copper and its, and its stand of copper for washing, and you must put it between the tent of meeting and the altar, and put water into it. And Aaron and his sons must wash their hands and their feet at it. So before um, they made their presence known in the tent of meeting, they had to um, make sure that they were thoroughly cleaned by using the large uh, copper basin, didn't they? But uh, cleanliness in the Israelite camp was required by the Holy God, and we can see this in Deuteronomy chapter 23. Let's turn on a few books to Deuteronomy uh, chapter 23. And the verses we'll look at are 10 to 14. In case there happens to be in you a man who does not continue clean because of a pollution that occurs at night, you must, <coughs> you must also go outside the camp. He may not come up into the midst of the camp, and it must occur that at the falling of evening he should wash with water and at the setting of the sun he may come into the midst of the camp. And a private place should be at your service outside the camp, and you must go out there. And a peg should be at your service along with your implements. And it must occur that when you squat outside, you must also dig a hole with it, and turn and cover your excrement. For Jehovah your God is walking about within your camp to, to deliver you, and abandon your enemies to you, and your camp must prove to be holy that he may see nothing indecent in you, and certainly turn away from accompanying you. So it was very important there, wasn't it, to be clean before Jehovah. Now, thoughtlessness regarding the honour due to Jehovah was not tolerated. The cleanliness required under the law was a basis for happiness. God's people uh, did not have to view this, his requirements about cleanliness as difficult or burdensome or even oppressive. But by all making a reasonable effort, the people would be able to live in a more pleasant environment. And it could take satisfaction in being a healthier people, less at risk of any epidemics or frequent illnesses. So basically speaking, it was for their own benefit, wasn't it? Uh, just as much as it was for Jehovah's. So God's providing such guidance could help them to see that he cared about them and they were special to him. Remaining in Deuteronomy, let's have a look at chapter 33, verse 29. 
Deuteronomy chapter 33 and we'll look at verse 29. Happy you are, O Israel. Who is there like you? A people enjoying salvation in Jehovah, the shield of your help, and the one who is your eminent sword. So your enemies will cringe before you, and you, upon their high places, you will tread. Also, if you take a look at Psalm 33, we'll get a little bit more insight here. Um, so that's Psalm chapter 33. We'll see what that tells us. Now we'll take up the account from uh, verse 12. Happy is the nation whose God is Jehovah, the people whom he has chosen as his inheritance. From the heavens Jehovah has looked. He has seen all the sons of men. From the established place where he dwells, he has gazed, gazed at all those dwelling on the earth. He is forming their hearts altogether. He is considering all their works. There is no king saved by the abundance of military forces. A mighty man himself is not delivered by the abundance of power. So we see there yet again um, that uh, Jehovah has looked upon men and tried to weigh up their hearts, hasn't he? So if we have a look also at um, Isaiah chapter 48 verse 17, Isaiah chapter 48 and we're going to look at verse 17. This is what Jehovah has said, your repurchaser, the Holy One of Israel. I, Jehovah, am your God, the one teaching you to benefit yourself, the one causing you to tread in the way in which you should walk. So Jehovah gives guidance, doesn't he, um, to all of his people uh, so that uh, they can um, benefit uh, from that guidance and have a happier life. So our whole manner of life should honour Jehovah. Just as the Israelite encampment represented the entire way of life, so must our way of life be kept clean, in order that Jehovah may say, see nothing indecent in us as well. So neatness and orderliness of our homes inside and out should be a witness to neighbours that we worship a pure God. What testimony as to our worship uh, of a God of holiness will be given in an untidy yard or an accumulation of rubbish, an unkempt home or an untidy car. It wouldn't, would it? Important also that people we have to, to associate with at work or at school get to know us as a clean speaking and clean living individual and uh, that we show respect for God and for neighbour by our attitude and our dress. Now they can see that serving God in his way helps us to be happier and healthier and more a satisfied people overall. So the pure God is to be approached uh, with godly fear and awe. And we should be concerned when we are serving Jehovah, representing him in the field ministry or on the platform. When required to appear before some prominent official, a governor or an employer, what is our appearance? Are we slovenly dressed? Are we careless of manner or grooming? Or with a view to giving, um, are we in there with a view to giving the best impression? Well, our entire appearance and attitude should display genuine awe and respect. Anything short of this would be an affront to Jehovah. King David refused to eat, bathe or care for his appearance out of sorrow and remorse at approaching death of his son but when time came to worship Jehovah, he bathed and appeared in a presentable fashion. Let's have a look at 2 Samuel chapter 12. That's 2 Samuel, and it's chapter 12. Uh, we take up the account from 20, verse 20. Then David got up from the earth and washed and rubbed himself with oil, and changed his mantles and came to the house of Jehovah and prostrated himself after which he came into his own house 
and asked, and they promptly set bread before him, and he began to eat. So we see there that uh, David ensured that his appearance was uh, of good respect and dignified, and that uh, he was uh, very much clean uh, before uh, you know his worship to Jehovah. So when assembling for our worship, you know, we Christian worshippers should likewise take care to groom and dress in the same way, shouldn't we? Not as it suits our convenience or comfort, but as it pleases the God who invited us to assemble and our fellow worshippers. Assembly for worship is no casual event or ordinary outing. If we have due respect for the happy, blessed congregation, we will not need fixed rules about what we can or cannot wear. And we will be pleased to reflect in our appearance the appreciation that we have for pure worship, shouldn't we? Now, pleasing God must come ahead of pleasing godly, uh, sorry, godless worldlings, shouldn't it? So, our dress and conduct, you know, shouldn't be geared towards impressing those people in the world, but towards our uh, brothers and sisters, but most importantly towards Jehovah. Now, multitudes swayed back and forth in conformance to every fad or fashion. Now, people worship and copy prominent worldlings in fields of sports, entertainment, business and society. Now, more time and thought is given to conforming to the ways of this system of things and to the transforming of their minds and manners and something that is essential to gain in life. So, it is important that we refuse to to, uh, to know blend in with uh, the godless system of things or in any way identify ourselves with it, its manners or its latest fads, particularly in uh, styles of dress and grooming. We do not want to make ourselves puppets of its fashion market, do we? Jehovah is no extremist, neither should we be in any activity of life. Turn with me please to 1 Timothy chapter 3. This is 1 Timothy chapter 3 and we're going to look at uh, verses um, 2. The overseer should therefore be reprehensible, a husband of one wife, moderate in habits, sound in mind, orderly, hospitable, qualified to teach. So we see there, the key word there is orderly and moderate, isn't it? And um, so that should be reflected in our dress, shouldn't it? We should have moderate and orderly uh, behaviour in our dress. Now there is no biblical indication that Paul or other apostles stood out because of some noteworthy uh, style of dress or grooming, something that would uh, get their attention. Well, we need to associate basically with those people who are clean, don't we? If we associate with people who are unclean, then it's hardly likely that we're going to be clean ourselves. So in order to maintain the cleanliness required by Jehovah, we must watch our associations, choosing only those who will support our decisions to please God. This is a well-known verse to most of us, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, let's have a look at that, shall we? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And it's verse 33. Do not be misled. Bad associations spoil useful habits. So there's some very, very clear advice in that one sentence there. Bad associations spoil useful habits. So if we associate with people who are bad, then we're going to be bad, aren't we, ourselves, and reflect that same attitude. We should never associate with liars, hypocrites, evildoers, wicked ones and those given to loose conduct or even rotten speech. 
how do we know this? Well, let's have a look at Psalm 26. Psalm 26. And we're going to look at verses 4, 5 and 10. Starting with verse 4, it says, I have not sat with men of untruth, and with those who hide what they are, I do not come in. Five, uh, I have hated the congregation of evildoers, and with the wicked ones I do not sit. And then verse 10. In whose hands there is loose conduct, and whose right hand is full of bribery. So those sort of people um, were um, very much uh, shunned by David, and they, they should be shunned by us too if we want to stand clean before Jehovah. Now those who simply refuse to hear or accept the message of the good news are not acceptable companions, are they? We, like David, should take pleasure in association with the congregated throngs of Jehovah's loyal ser servants. Let's have a look at verse 12 of that chapter 26 if you've still got it open there. Sorry, verse 12 says, My own foot will certainly stand on a level place among the congregated throngs I shall bless Jehovah. That was very much important to David, wasn't it? So David realised that wrong companionships could at least lead to his losing his life along with sinners. Let's just have a look at verse 9 again, shall we, in 26, uh, on the 26 uh, Psalm there. It says, Do not take away my soul along with sinners, nor my life along with blood guilty men. So there again, you know, he realised that uh, if he had wrong companionships, then that might would lead, that would lead him to his uh, to his death. So though our brothers and sisters are not perfect, they are they are so much more wholesome associates than people in Satan's system, aren't they? Because even when they falter, generally overall, overall, they are inclined towards Jehovah, aren't they, and His way of doing things. Now, blessings can result from a clean way of life. And we can have those blessings now, not just in the new system. For example, our physical health can be improved by clean conduct and habits. Our self-respect enhanced by knowledge, but no fault can be found with us with regard to our worship of God. Let's just have a look at Daniel chapter 6. The book of Daniel chapter 6 and we're going to look at verse 5 consequently these able-bodied men were saying we shall find in this Daniel no pretext at all except we have to find it against him in the law of his God so um, Daniel being a God-fearing man he was um, they found it very very difficult to find any error or uncleanliness in him didn't they so we can have satisfaction in matching our service of a clean God with our personal cleanliness let's just go back to Isaiah and uh, look at um, chapter 52 this time chapter 52 and it's verse 11 turn away turn away get out of there Touch nothing unclean, get out from the midst of her, keep yourselves clean, you who are carrying the utensils of Jehovah. So that's quite a, a very straightforward instruction there, isn't it? So we've seen the blessings that we might receive now, but what about the future blessings we might receive if we keep ourselves clean? Well, we have a promise of God's acknowledgement of us as his sons and daughters, the anointed ones will be heavenly sons, whereas um, the, the, earth, the earthly flock will be um, his earthly sons, won't they? Now, after God declares the anointed perfect and approved, his earthly servants will be able to become perfect human sons of God under their guidance. Then, 
will have an everlasting relationship with the one who is pure and upright in all his activities, including those of his new system of things. Let's have a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Therefore, get out from among them and separate yourselves, says Jehovah, and quit touching the unclean thing, and I will take you in. And just to reinforce that, let's have a look at 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3, verse 3. And everyone who has his hope set upon him purifies himself just as that one is pure. So we want to emulate Jehovah, don't we, in pureness and cleanness and holiness. So, are you a clean person? Are there areas in your life where you might need to make adjustments? Well, it's a good thing to analyse, isn't it? Because it's obviously very important to Jehovah that we are a clean people who doesn't profane his name. If you would like a free home Bible study at a time and place to suit you, please navigate your browser to jw.org and follow the links online. Thank you so much for listening.